Hi guys, it's Xenia. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am bringing you seven perfume alternatives to some of your favorite perfumes. Now, I want to give a quick disclaimer here. I'm not necessarily saying that these are better than the original, but I guess I am saying that they are better. But they just kind of offer a little bit more, maybe a little bit more uniqueness to the original. A lot of these are like really, really, really popular perfumes that are somewhat overused, I feel like. So I kind of came up with some alternatives that will offer you the same type of family of scents generally, but they will differ in little ways, just giving them like this extra uniqueness so that you don't end up smelling like every other person. I'm not knocking any of the originals. If some of these originals are like your staples and it's your signature perfume and you love it, then you keep wearing it. Like I said, I'm not saying that these are bad, but because they are so overused, I wanted to offer up an alternative. With all that being said, please subscribe to my channel and turn your post notifications on and let's get straight into this video. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the OG perfume and then I'll tell you guys the alternative. So the first perfume I'm gonna start off with is one that I probably don't even need to say the name of because you probably recognize it just from this bottle. I think even if you are not a perfume person and you're not like obsessed with perfumes, you've probably seen this perfume like somebody at least that you know has worn this perfume. This is the ever so famous YSL Black Opium. I never wanna say that this perfume is bad because to me, every time I smell it, I don't think it's bad. I think it smells really sexy, it smells seductive. There's a coffee note in it. It's really, really rich and very, very sweet. Definitely for more of like the sweet perfume lovers. But this is so overworn in my opinion, again, not to say that that's bad, but I wanted to give you guys an alternative that will kind of give you a little bit more. It will give you the same type of scent that is in here, so you're not going to lose that sexy, delicious sweetness that this has. The alternative that I have for YSL Black Opium is Dolce & Gabbana The Only One. Oh, I love this perfume. It's also like equally as sexy to me. This also has a coffee note. So they do smell very, very similar. And by the way, another thing that I will say about all these perfumes, I'm calling these alternatives, I'm not calling them dupes. So the alternatives will be in the same type of scent family and may even smell a little similar to the original, but they are not dupes. So I just wanna like clarify that. This one smells very similar to Black Opium, but this has an added coconut note. So Black Opium has some florals, like there's jasmine, bitter almond, there's also licorice in here. And then mixed with like the vanilla that's in here, it has like this woody cashmere sort of feel. Whereas, Dolce & Gabbana, the only one, also has vanilla, also has the coffee, but this also has caramel. So that is the only kind of distinction between the two that I can make. They both have a note of patchouli. I actually read somewhere that patchouli is an aphrodisiac, which to me makes a lot of sense because I find that a lot of perfumes that have patchouli in them are some of like my most complimented perfumes. So... I don't know if that's true. These are both very long lasting perfumes, but I think this one definitely wins as far as longevity. This one lasts a lot more. That's basically the only difference that you're gonna get in here. You're gonna get that coffee vanilla scent just with another added really rich caramel note, which adds like this other level of sweetness that just makes this very, very delicious. I wouldn't say that either of these are gourmands. They're just like very, very rich, sweet, uh, florally, sweet vanilla type of perfumes. Definitely check out the only one if you want a better alternative to Black Oak. So the next perfume that I have an alternative for is one that I'm almost kind of regretful that I bought it and I'll let you guys know why. So this is Chanel Chance Eau Tendre. I've heard so many things about this perfume before I got it, which made me really want to get it. People were raving about how complimented this perfume is and it's just such a crowd pleaser and it smells very fresh and clean, like a clean girl. And I definitely agree with that. I do like it. It's very fresh, kind of floral but in like a very aquatic type of floral way, like just fresh, very, very fresh. And the reason why I guess I'm kind of regretful is because I noticed after I bought it that I had a lot of perfumes in my collection that smelled very similar to this type of scent. And this is not a super uh, inexpensive scent. It's like 
a hundred I think it was like maybe a little over a hundred but I do have an alternative to this and I think it's almost even a better alternative and one that lasts I wore it the other day I went out for a walk and this is the perfume that I wore I was walking for like two hours straight in like the heat I live in Florida it's like a hundred degrees outside it's summer like it's, it's hot it's very 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 hot here and humid so you're like sweating and when I tell you, this would not leave my side. This perfume stuck to me through all of that. Like, it was just so powerful and it smells so good. And I find that so um, strange, the fact that it's so long lasting for a scent that is really, really fresh. Because a lot of fresh scents, even the more expensive ones, they just don't last because they're fresh. Like, there's nothing really holding them together. And with Chanel Jeanette's Eau Tendre, I don't get much longevity in here at all i get like i don't even want to say an hour like maybe that's like the maximum i would get if i really really went to town spraying this but this is not long lasting at all and i just i'm very regretful honestly that i bought this i may put this up on my mercari so keep a lookout for that it might end up getting going on there at some point not because i hate it but for the price it's just not worth it i have better alternatives like the one i'm going to show you so the perfume that I am raving about here is Bulgari Omnia Coral. This perfume, I knew that this was going to be a good one because I got a compliment on this perfume literally the first time I ever wore it. The first day, actually like an hour after I bought it. I'm pretty sure I've told this story before, but that's just like what made me like solidify the fact that I really love this perfume. Because right after I had purchased it, I went through like a McDonald's drive through which I, I don't do McDonald's. I hate McDonald's. It's It makes me feel so disgusting. But this was a while ago and I'm on my health journey now. But I stopped by because it was like the closest thing to me and I was kind of far away from home and I was starting to get kind of like shaky. So I just like stopped by for like something quick like fries or whatever. And I put down the window and the girl that was handing me my food, she was like, you smell so good. And she was like very adamant about it. Like she was like, you smell amazing. Like what perfume do you have on? So that's just what made me feel like, okay, this is a nice perfume. Like clearly people like this. It is such a pretty fresh scent. Has like this touch of sweetness to it. And in comparison <clears throat> to Chanel Chan's Tandra, I feel like this one is just a tad more like fresh aquatic almost has a bit of like this really really clean soapy scent to it whereas bulgari omia coral gives you that same type of fresh flu fruity floral scent it's not as aquatic as this one is and it's definitely not as soapy i wouldn't even call this a soapy scent i mean it's very clean like fresh out the shower and as far as notes this one has like keens and grapefruit as far as like the fruits that are in here and this has pomegranate so that's kind of where you get a little bit more of that like richness a bit more sweetness a bit of like this tangy sort sort of feel it has goji berries and bergamot so it's very fresh and then it has like this woody musky base which this one also has but the musk in here is kind of leaning more of like a soapy musk i definitely would say go for this one one of the most complimented scents ever like whether you care about that or not i'm just stating a fact here it is literally like out of all my perfumes a scent that by far gets me a compliment pretty much every single time i step out of the house so definitely check out bulgari omnia as a better alternative to chanel chance O tundra i'm gonna keep the next one kind of brief because i've talked about it a lot i just had to include it in this video because it's basically the theme of this video so i'm sure you guys are probably going to know what alternative if you watch my channel that i'm about to show this is dolce gabbana light blue i have the o intense here i feel like in my opinion they all smell the same it's just like a little bit more intensified i actually really enjoy the scent of light blue i know that light blue is a bit more of a, like a polarizing scent because a lot of people just don't love the fact that it's not very feminine it almost kind of leans a little masculine because of how crisp and fresh it is it lacks pretty much like any hint of sweetness it's very very citrusy it's got lemon in it this one has a uh, green apple it's musky it has some jasmine it's a bit woody it's just like nothing in here screams feminine 
but it doesn't really scream masculine either. It's just like a very, very fresh scent. So anybody can really wear this scent. But if you are somebody that you don't love, like you just want to smell really girly, then you're probably not going to like this. So I have a better alternative for those of you that maybe you kind of like this scent, but you wish that it was a little bit sweeter. You wish that it gave you a little bit more of like a feminine feel. And that perfume is one that I've been talking about a lot. Ironically, it's called Women. This is Calvin Klein Women. Do not sleep on Calvin Klein perfumes. I feel like Calvin Klein perfumes are so underrated, but I have discovered so many gems in the Calvin Klein house and this is one of them. This is one that will never leave my perfume collection. I adore this scent. So I've mentioned this before and I'm gonna mention it again. It's basically like what I call the more feminine version of Dolce Gabbana Light Blue and that is because this one kind of gives you a bit more feminine notes in it. It has a touch, I don't wanna say that it's sweet, but it has a touch of sweetness definitely more than light blue light blue doesn't even have any so I don't, I don't know what I'm saying more than light blue but it just has sweetness and that is because this one gives you a bit of like this raspberry note so this one has that same like very citrusy vibe to it like you get grapefruit bergamot lemon tons of citrus in here but you get a lot of more florals in here very pretty modern florals uh, you get that touch of the raspberry and then you get a very woody base just like light blue but in here you also get like cashmere in, in the base you get this really clean white musk you get violet it just gives this like a bit more of a feminine feel and i find this very very sexy so that's basically my take on kevin klein women and i definitely enjoy it a lot more than light blue i think this is a lot easier to wear if you want a scent that is just a bit more feminine than light blue but you still want that freshness the crisp the woodiness that this one offers it's just better in my opinion like if you are trying to decide or maybe if you're looking into getting this fragrance maybe try looking in this direction a lot of you guys that have told me that you bought this um because of my recommendation you have all told me that it's been a hit you all love it and it is also a very complimented scent that smells very unique so that is calvin klein women definitely check it out as an alternative to light blue the next one again i'm going to kind of briefly talk about this this is an alternative for a celebrity perfume and it's actually the same perfume but you'll see what i mean so i've talked about this before but i wanted to include it in this alternatives video because i i feel like it's a better alternative this is the original rebel fleur by rihanna and this is iconic a lot of people have discovered this scent now it's like this deep plummy sensual sexy dark scent like going out club type of scent very very sexy and seductive and the notes in here are really rich you get some berries you get plum you get this coconutty type of feel you get a lot of patchouli in the base which really holds this together and makes it really really project lasts a really long time which is very rare for a celebrity perfume and then you also get really rich vanilla in here amber it's very very sweet and very intense like this is not for like the faint of heart this is a strong perfume in all aspects but although i really like this perfume i don't have anything bad to say about it once i discovered this alternative I feel like I'm never gonna go back to that perfume. This is Rebel Fleur's Flanker, and it looks exactly the same other than the fact that it's just like all black. So this is Rebel Fleur Love Always. This is a flanker for Leber, Leber. This is a whole tongue twister. This is a flanker for Rebel Fleur. Now, let me start off by saying these two have the exact same scent notes, like literally, not a single difference between the two notes at all, which is kind of weird to see for a flanker. I mean, when people do flankers, it's like, yeah, it's the same type of DNA, but they'll add a note, they'll take out a note, whatever. Like, they'll, they'll do some difference to it. And I don't know what they did in here. I think that they kind of messed with, like, the amounts of the notes that were in here. Like, maybe they added more of something and less of something else. And that's what I feel like happened. So, as I said, same scent notes, both get like that plum, berry rich, vanilla, coconutty, creamy type of scent, but this one is better 
because the patchouli in here is not as strong. So I think that they kind of minimized the patchouli aspect and they added on the coconut feel. Not because this smells coconutty or anything like that. Like, I don't even smell coconut in here. But the coconut kind of gives this creaminess to all of the notes. And it kind of has so much more of like this smoother type of scent to it than this one does. This one I feel like can be a little bit more polarizing. Whereas this one is just a bit more refined. And I actually read the description that they have on here. So I'm going to read that to you because... That's exactly what I just said. So it says that Revel Fleur is announced as a rich, sexy, and more refined version, what I just said, of the Shepra Fruity Original. So that's why I'm calling this as a better alternative to it. You still get the same type of scent, just in a better way. Definitely check out Love Always as an alternative to the original. I feel like not a lot of people know about this one, so... Hopefully now, you know. Okay, next up, Coco Mademoiselle, another extremely popular scent. I don't think a lot of people wear this now. I mean, maybe they do, I'm not sure, but I don't really hear as much of this now. I feel like a few years ago, this was like popping and everybody was wearing Coco Mademoiselle, but I don't really hear much about it anymore. I'm not knocking this scent. I think it's a beautiful scent. It's very, very elegant. And for a scent that comes out of Chanel, which they do usually very mature scents, which I mean, that's their thing, like, which I think is special in their own way. And Coco Mademoiselle, I feel like a lot of people loved because this is a bit more modern than most of their fragrances. I still do find this very mature, but it is a lot more wearable than most of the fragrances in the house. I don't really have much beef with this other than the fact that the patchouli in here is really heavy and I just find it a bit too mature for me. I do think that there's a time and a place for it, but I just feel like this calls for like a really, really like serious type of event or I don't know, location, whatever, where you have to wear like a strict dress code or something you can't show much skin that's what i think of every time i smell this scent like it's very very what's the what's the word that i'm looking for conservative that's the exact word that i was looking for this is a very very conservative scent in my opinion and it's just a bit too serious for me so the alternative for that is on completely the other side of that this is very fun it kind of has a little bit of similarity to coco mademoiselle in fact a lot of people say that this is a dupe to coco mademoiselle i don't think they're dupes yes i do notice some uh similarities but i don't think that they're dupes this one in my opinion is way better than coco mademoiselle it's a lot more fun a lot more fresh ton more fruitiness in here a lot less um florals that are really heavy and mature it's just like the more fun version of coco mademoiselle and that is shiseido zen this comes in like this big cube this one has beautiful fruits in it you get like grapefruit pineapple bergamot orange red apple just really really delicious juicy fruits it's woody in the base it's a bit musky very clean and fresh without being too clean and fresh and i do find this sexy because of that like really nice woody aspect that this has in the base but it's just 10 times better than Coco Mademoiselle. It's just, it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's more fun. It's more fruity. It's more bright. And it's more like summertime, I feel like. I, I do think you could wear this all year round. But definitely more summertime because of those really gorgeous fruits that this has. So check out Shiseido Zen as a way better alternative to Coco Mademoiselle. The next scent I have an alternative to. I don't have the original scent. I've owned it so many times in the past. I'm pretty sure everybody has. Um, I do have one that smells very similar to it. This is um, Viva La Juicy Noir, I believe. Yeah, but what I'm talking about is just the original Viva La Juicy. I have a way better alternative for you. Now, Viva La Juicy, it's a really nice scent. Let me start off by saying it's a scent that to this day, if you wear that out, you are going to be complimented so many times because you just smell like that girl. It's like a hot, sexy scent, but... I feel like maybe now that we're a little bit more grown, you want to wear something that's a little bit more elevated and not too mature, but more mature than Viva La Juicy was. Like if Viva La Juicy was like, you know, in her prime teen years, this fragrance I'm going to talk about is like prime 20s. And that is Gucci Flora Gorgeous Gardenia. When I first saw that this came out, I had absolutely zero intention of even smelling it because I do not like gardenia scents but this completely shocked me because this does not smell 
even one bit like gardenia it doesn't even smell floral to me this is very very sweet and it has the same type of dna that is in viva the juicy which is so odd especially coming out of gucci like their scents are very floral usually this is not i find this really fun and very bright has a lot of white florals in it but in a really fun way i don't know i can't describe it it's a bit citrusy it has brown sugar in it so it definitely has a lot of sweetness i think it is definitely a gorgeous scent i smell absolutely zero hints of gardenia in here which i'm glad it's just a really beautiful feminine scent that is basically like viva la juicy but she's all grown up now and that's basically what Gucci Flora Gorgeous Gardenia is. So check this out as an alternative to Viva La Juice. And then the last scent I have to recommend is for Mongerlan by Guerlain. Again, if you are an OG subscriber of mine, you probably know what I'm going to say for the alternative. But Mongerlan is like this... It's a really strange, like, very unique perfume. There's a lot of lavender in it, which I think is kind of the signature of the perfume. There's this, like, heavy patchouli aspect in the base. A bit of, like, sandalwood. I do find it sexy in its, like, own weird way. But it's definitely a strange scent that could be polarizing because it's more, like, on the unique side. But... I have discovered a way, 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 way better alternative to Mongerlan. I actually don't own Mongerlan. I've smelled it, didn't really love it, so I didn't buy it. But this is so much better, in my opinion. And I've put so many of you guys onto this perfume. It has a lot of similarities to Mongerlan. I don't know how to explain it. This one doesn't have lavender in it, so it doesn't have that, like, sharpness. A lot of people, I feel like don't do super well with lavender. Lavender can come across as a bit of like a masculine note sometimes and this one doesn't have that. This one does have sage and it has vetiver in it which would make you think that this is a bit more like on the earthy side and I honestly don't think so. Like I find this more of a vanilla scent more than anything. It's literally called seductive noir and that's exactly what it smells like. It's like a dark seductive scent Definitely like a clubbing scent, going on a first date type of thing. That's kind of what I envision with this scent. The vanilla is so prominent in here and it's probably like the main thing that I smell. And then the vanilla is kind of mixed in with it, the velvet note, the vetiver, the sage, the bergamot. It's a beautiful, more feminine version and more like smooth, refined version, kind of in the same way that love always is to rebel fleur like this is just way more smooth and refined not as like sharp that's exactly how i would describe guest seductive noir in comparison to mongrelan and by the way this is like 14 dollars i found it for 14 dollars at i think tj maxx you can find it online you can find it at ross marshall's tj maxx it's been popping up everywhere uh burlington as well so check it out in those stores, otherwise just order it online, but it's cheap everywhere you get it, and Mongrelan is like $60, $70, so definitely go for this one. It smells so rich and high-end, so that's Guess Seductive Noir, better alternative to Mongrelan by Girl. Right, so that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed these alternatives. Please let me know if you guys have found better alternatives to some really popular perfumes or just any perfumes in general. I always like to find perfumes that are just a little bit more unique than something that is really popular and overused. So let me know if you have any of your alternatives. Leave them down below. But that is it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and turn your post notifications on and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!